Today, we kick things off with a very special guest. She describes her career as empowering retail investors and championing financial well being. We are proud to welcome to the program the CEO of eToro US, Lule Demise. Lule, how are you doing today? Hey, Zayden Delano. I'm so excited to be here with you, man. Uh, we are so, so excited as well. We want to get into a bunch of topics today. Kicking things off with DeFi. You know, DeFi has been getting a lot of press recently, some good, some bad. I want to get your take. What are the aspects of DeFi that excite you? You know, what I love about DeFi is what I love about everything that I've that's come across my career that mm -hmm. breaks normal, right? Because we know that normal means status quo. And status quo usually means that people who are on the outside of systems don't get access to them, right? Mm. So the benefit to me of DeFi, I mean, the definitional benefit is a decentralized finance, right? But what does it mean in practical sense? It means that systems that have either guarded the gates of access to things that could facilitate transactions among normal small businesses, people in developing countries, those gates get dissolved because now in code you trust, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, it means that fees that have been, you know, high for transactional or other benefits get challenged because ultimately some of those steps that you have to take to make a transaction happen disappear and it's a much more direct contract to contract engagement, right? So there's practical elements of what technology does every time, which is create efficiencies. Mm -hmm. But there's also aspirational elements, that, which is that people who didn't get access to some of these facilities get access. Mm -hmm. Lula, that's a, such a great point. And I what, like what you mentioned about challenging the status quo. Um, and, and I really heard you speak on this topic a lot. But as people of color here, you know, on this show, there are some things that need to be challenged in the status quo, especially when we're talking about crypto and this new technology. You know, I've, what would you like specifically like to see happen in order to get more women and people of color involved in DeFi? So part of it is seeing people of color talking mm. about this stuff, right? <laughs> I think the power of representation is a big part of it, right? Because mm -hmm. the reality is like you could hear, I've heard enough about, you know, how the industry does not let people in, how, it, yes, those are all true. Yeah. Come on in and break it apart then, people, <laughs> right? And part of it is just being defiant, see like that? Mm -hmm. So defiant and coming into the house and being a Trojan horse and coming in and learning it. Yeah. One of the things I love about your, your show is that you are bringing the knowledge to the table not just the, the the noise of why things are people are left out but the knowledge mm. and what is the key to getting into any gate knowledge right mm -hmm. so to my mind's eye the first thing is like getting people excited about getting intellectually engaged mm. about this space it is so much fun i break my brain every day learning in this space mm. so that's one is like representation and people like us talking about what it means not just how it's left us out but what it means we becoming the ninjas talking about this stuff. Mm -hmm. That's just as important. You're absolutely right. And, and you're just myself, just over the last few months, I've been going on deep dives, learning more about the DeFi space. And just the more knowledge I gain, the more comfortable I feel with it, because it can kind of be scary in the beginning, yeah. but there's constant absolutely. innovation happening in the space. So what do you think over the next year, like what do you think is gonna be the biggest dramatic change in the DeFi space? So I think we're living through, you know, like every innovation, there's the exhale and then there's the inhale, right? So clearly with the macro environment we're in, right, with the fiscal policy that's there, right? You can't divorce that from the cycles of innovation, mm -hmm. right? So as monetary contraction happens, of course, it's going to impact growth. Who gets impacted when growth is, is hit, right? Innovation, the stuff that makes stuff for not just tomorrow, but the day after tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? So there's the immediate reality of what happens, you know, in a world where there's monetary contraction, what happens to DeFi, what happens to innovation and technology, and that is that it could slow down, right? The, the beyond the immediate reality is this, technology has never been able to be won over, mm -hmm. meaning that it always wins right? Mm. It always wins. And so the way I look at it is you either get on the train to understand this technology or you're left further behind because your distance of knowledge is so huge. So what will happen in this industry? 
we're doing a little bit of an exhale, an inhale right now, right? Um, and we will learn from that. There'll be interesting regulations that come out of it. There'll be the, in, the broader traditional landscape learning about it. But in the end, I think what happens over the broader horizon is that this amazing technology takes on more use cases, more valuable things that bring real value to real people. Mm, real value to real people. I love that, Lule. And, and a lot of people are starting to get to know your incredible background, your story um, in economics and investing, uh, which, you know, is, is, is it's really impressive. And what has been for you your biggest influence in, in pushing you in that direction for a career? Obviously, you know, the skill set is amazingly there. Um, the passion is there. But was it instilled in you at a younger age or did it come later on through education? What clicked with you is like, this is the way that I'm going to reach a lot of people. And how... Where, where was that click for you? Uh, when I realized power, the knowledge of money was power. Mm. <laughs> and I realized that in order for us to advance equity, you got to know the heartbeat of money. Mm. Um, and frankly, it was interesting to me. I have always been into, I'm like a kid. Mm -hmm. This is like a very interesting, intellectually interesting. Uh, you, This is genuine. I'm not, I didn't take a bunch of caffeine. I didn't even have my coffee today. <laughs> Can you imagine what I would be like if I had my coffee? Uh, but like, it's so genuinely interesting to me. So it's the idea of like capturing the intellectual interest and not thinking of it as work or chore, mm. right? Um, the way I try to engage people is sometimes what happens is when people talk DeFi or crypto or anything that's futuristic, they, they get themselves all worked up in explaining the technology mm -hmm. instead of explaining the what will that technology provide. Mm -hmm. And for most people who didn't grow up with this around their dinner table, around having their uncles and aunts and parents take them to clubs where they're talking about this, mm -hmm. unless they know the why, it's really hard to be at the table to talk about the what. Right. So, yes, I was privileged enough to have parents that fostered intellectual, you know, curiosity, but mm. they didn't know about DeFi or any of this. Right. Mm. But they fostered intellectual curiosity. I had three brothers that I had to constantly fight over to get attention. That also helped. Uh, and then I also just in general genuinely liked this topic. So I leaned in um, and wanted to be a master at it. I'm not I'm far from it, but that is one of the, the things that drove me. Lula, I think you mentioned something that really caught my attention is having the intellectual curiosity. And I think a lot of young people, especially young people, have the intellectual curiosity, whether it's about investing in the stock market or even things like crypto and DeFi. But what about the people, maybe like the older people, right? Like maybe people like my parents that just grew up in a traditional financial environment and they're just really confused or scared or skeptical about DeFi and the technology, whether it's the yield farming or any of that stuff. Yeah. What would you tell them about like their skepticism about this whole space? So I think skepticism is very important, right? I often would say like, if I had a band when I was in my teens, it would be called the Doubting Thomases. <laughs> I am, I love skepticism. It's a healthy mental framework, right? But there's a difference between healthy skepticism and frightened. Mm -hmm. um, and fright, what it does is it freezes you in place. Mm -hmm. And when you are frightened and don't have knowledge, you are the one that is going to be left out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things I tell people is, don't, don't be deaf to your skepticism, let it be, but then put it aside for a second and get into the knowledge space, right? I'm not encouraging people to deep dive into this with their wallets right, right. away, mm -hmm. right? But there's no cost to intellectual curiosity. There's no cost to being open-minded and learning. Right. So one of the things I tell people is respect your skeptic, your inner skeptic, but put aside your inner fear person, because that one is not going to serve you well. Yeah, you're absolutely right. One of the best places to learn about this stuff is the Internet and this show, especially when we got dive into topics like DeFi For and sure. to break down. So this show is fabulous. This is a great show to learn about that. Thank you. Thank you. Lule. Well, this was a great, great conversation. Thank you so much for being on the show, for giving us some of your time. We would really like to have you back on soon to talk more about this stuff. Cause I think I, I think more people want to le le learn from you and your background. I think more people are more open to learn from you as well, just because of the background that you come from. So thank you so much. And hopefully we can have you on soon. My pleasure. And keep on doing what you do. Thank you. Thank Ray. you so much. Take care. Hey, thanks for watching everybody. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell and be sure to tune in tomorrow.